today I remembered <laughs> that the schedule had changed which is good proof because it means I will continue to remember that. Now today we are actually going to look at three chapters. Uh, that would be The Scar, The Invitation, and Back to the Burrow. Which doesn't actually feature the burrow. It's just the journey back. And I would like the opportunity to speak about the Statue of Secrecy. Because this set of chapters, interestingly enough, allows us to explore some positive reasons for the Statue of Secrecy. But I think it also outlines some not-so-positive problems keeping a society secret from another society. And why this set of chapters is actually so interesting is the main people we're seeing with interactions with in this chapter are people who have actually been allowed past that line of secrecy. That is, the Dursleys, who have a magical child in their household, who then get to know about this world. Because there are several times in these set of chapters where we're seeing the worlds actually clashing. Um, not being able to understand each other. For example, of course, in the invitation, the sheer number of postage stamps. Somebody who doesn't know about this different world might just see this as a practical joke. Somebody thought it would be really funny to just plaster the envelope with stamps. Heh. <laughs> They're gonna find it funny. Uh, somebody who is aware of this other world, perhaps they might still find it funny. They might get angry at the not-normalcy of it, which we see with the Dursleys. But there's also got to be that recognition that there's a difference in how these worlds operate. And what's normal for you is not normal for them. Like, Molly says this isn't normal for her. She asks Harry to respond in the normal way. Uh, and this bothers Dursley. One way again, because we can see he's very biased against this magical world. But in truth, Molly, in saying that, is saying that the muggles aren't normal, which is necessarily going to be offensive to anyone who doesn't have magic. Why are we suddenly the not normal ones? Obviously, you're not normal. What we're actually seeing here is a clash of cultures that can actually be very destructive. The other example, of course, is with the fireplace. A wizard would never think of to block a fireplace because they travel via it. But for muggles, it's actually perfectly normal if you've decided to upgrade, upgrade to an electric fire, or even to remove the fireplace altogether. My parents' house has a fireplace, but we certainly don't use it anymore. And if I'm right, we've actually blocked the chimney so that we stop having stuff come down it. It makes sense for us to move forward away from these things because we've developed other things that provide that same use. But for the wizards, they simply actually learned other uses for the same thing. It's a clash that is very difficult to overcome, but it's one we also see in our normal world. Globalization faces this cultural problem a lot, especially when there are things like hand signals items, how you hold yourself, that in some cultures is are perfectly acceptable and used certain ways, and then in other cultures are actually going to be 
considered sacred, profane, rude, improper, more proper. And you have to be aware of that crossing over. But the problem is, with the Statue of Secrecy, that crossover is very limited, even for the people who are permitted to straddle that line. How much are, let's say, someone like uh, Hermione's parents, who seem to be possibly more accepting than Harry's relatives. Uh, I believe we've seen them on the actual train platform before. Um, so, how much knowledge do they get to actually have about the world? When Hermione was petrified, were they informed? Were they allowed to visit her in the hospital wing? Did they just fix the problem and then send their daughter back, like, the daughter back going, just don't mention anything to your parents? This line of information is there for the safety of both sides in a hopes of avoiding a lot of these cultural clashes. Especially when it comes to violence on both sides. Magic users have the ability to hurt people a lot easier, but muggles have also shown that they have the rage and fear to, to stand up. And I think if any other wizard but Hagrid had gone to get Harry, that gun that Vernon had might have been an issue. But the other problem is that you sort of, in trying to keep the culture separate, there's a lot of problems for the people that do cross over. And for both muggles and magical family members who live in the same household, that's going to necessarily be difficult. For example, if, say, Mr. Uh, Mr. Weasley, Arthur, had gone back through the flu before any of the boys, uh, and Fred, or George, I actually can't remember who drops the candy. Fred, yeah, it's Fred. Um, if Fred had still dropped the candy and Dudley had eaten it, but Arthur had gone back through first, none of those boys legally can defend themselves in that moment. So... If Vernon did get violent, like he did before, the boys would be in trouble. Arthur is the only one in that situation who has any way of actually defending himself with what he's been taught to use to defend himself. But that's true with Dudley, too. Dudley has no defense against this magical candy. Both sides are actually poking at each other more because they can't understand each other and it makes them angry and afraid. So we have the Statue of Secrecy to prevent this on a large scale, which I do think makes sense. Uh, because we have information from the previous books that says that the, the cultures were connected earlier. Uh, and witch burnings occurred. And again, let's go with the, the witch burnings were ineffective. That still tells people that the muggles are willing to get real violent. And having read the entire series previously, we're also aware that the children of the Magical Society are very Definitely the weak point. Ariana Dumbledore is attacked and can't defend herself. Harry has spent his life in a cupboard. 
And in fact, to continue to be left alone has to threaten his own family members insofar as they've threatened him before. It's a conversation of fear that's going on. Even with the Statue of Secrecy being present. And the thing is, a lot of people of course look at it and say, but magic could do so much for our world. And I think the Muggle technology could do a lot for the magical world. Um, I mean, we've seen what they can do with cars. If cars were better accepted, that might even be a better option. If these worlds were willing to communicate, then I think a lot could get done. But the thing is, communication in this way is really hard. Even in the small pockets of communication we are seeing, what we are seeing is a Cold War. It's hoping that the threat of violence on either side is enough to prevent the other side from snapping and doing something. Vernon is hoping that he's still big enough and strong enough to keep Harry from doing magical things, and Harry's hoping the threat of his godfather is going to do the same thing. They're at a stalemate because they're both scared that they're not going to be strong enough. But it also means that either side can't back down, because that would be a show of weakness. And how likely is it that the other side's going to back down? Or the other side's going to take advantage of your weakness? And the thing is, even if benefits on both sides could be considered, it's really hard when you've already got so much damage in the relationships between these two cultures. Even within our Western society, there are a lot of people who have a lot of difficulty accepting nuclear power plants in their area. There could be a thousand benefits outlined, uh, but they've seen the negative power that nuclear power can have in the atomic bombs. They've seen the worst of the worst for this particular thing, so how can you necessarily look at it and say, yeah, but it's got some positives. And they've also seen when those positives can go haywire. They've seen nuclear meltdowns. So suddenly you're going, yeah, okay, cool. So that thing, even when it's for our benefit, can still hurt us very badly. I could see muggles straying away from magic. The Dursleys have heard about this madman who went through killing everybody. And then a practical joke that maybe for wizards really is just, let's have some fun because we can fix it right away. That's got to be terrifying. So what we're actually seeing in this set of chapters is maybe there's a reason for the Statue of Secrecy, but there are problems in how it's implemented for certain families. They can try and communicate between them, but there's this constant conversation of fear going on, and no one's willing to back down. So, right now, with the way the Harry Potter canon is set up, it is either we don't exist at all, or we exist in a state of Cold War. And that's frightening. I think these two worlds could do a lot for each other if they were willing to communicate. But everyone's too scared. And there are reasons for both sides to be scared. But we can't let that fear override us. But unfortunately it is. So we'll have to keep an eye on, on how the Dursleys are taking this. They are in a liminal space that is deeply uncomfortable for them. 
and they're acting out because of it. And I think Harry's eventually going to realize it. But I don't think he does right now. Hopefully he gets there soon. Okay. <laughs> so that, hey, three chapters in one, in one video. Don't expect that to keep going. Yep, we're off on going in Goblet of Fire. I'm still using my copy because it's, it's fine for the beginning. Maybe the, the back of it might be a little structurally questionable. The start is fine. I'm going to keep reading, and I hope you do too. See ya!